share with us what you learned and what you know and what you feel you understand about the man, Lord Balfour? He, he was a, a remarkable man, um, very unusual. He was a, a very tall, very thin, aristocratic. Uh, he lounged around. He, he was known for saying, nothing much matters and very few things matter at all. That was one of the things for that. So he was very laid back and he spent a lot of time leaning on any convenient wall. And when he was in Parliament, he lay back on the, on the benches with his feet up. And he wrote books on philosophy and on doubt and very unusual sort of chap. He was very good at conversation. People loved his conversation, very humorous. He was very attractive to women. Women were very attracted to him. He was attracted to them, but he never married. Had a long affair with a married woman, but he didn't marry. And so he was, uh, no one thought anything of him. He was just a, a layabout, really. Uh, and then he was made minister for Northern Ireland, for Ireland, by the Prime Minister. Everyone was surprised how come this lazy MP who'd hardly spoken until it was realized that the Prime Minister who made him was his uncle. <laughs> Lord Salisbury was his uncle, and his uncle's real name was Robert Cecil, and when Bob's your uncle, anything can happen. <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's where Bob's your uncle came from. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Robert Cecil. And he, uh, he did quite a good job as uh, the Irish Secretary. He was known as Bloody Balfour because he put the Irish down, but he was well liked. Churchill described him as having the character of a great pope. He was uh, highly regarded. And then he became prime minister for a while in the early 1900s, and then eventually he became foreign secretary in Lord George's government in 1916. That's when we come to it. So how come did this paragon of virtue, everyone loved him, how come did he get to produce the declaration? Some say, it was because uh, he, want, he felt guilty for having produced the Aliens Act in 1904. The Aliens Act limited immigration into Britain, from, mostly from Eastern Europe, mostly Jews. And was he guilty from that? Highly unlikely, I think. Some say it was because he wanted to reward Weizmann for having produced acetone, as we heard. Uh, acetone was used in the production of explosives in the First World War. Very important. That's what's taught in Israeli schools, I gather. Perhaps you can tell me. Uh, I don't think that was the reason. It's an unlikely reason. Was it to convince the Jews in America to persuade their president to uh, come into the war on the side of the Brits? He was outside. They were outside in 1916. Was it that? Maybe that was important. More, more, more important, the fact that to have a friendly nation, friendly series of people, Jews, in the Middle East to protect Britain's interests in the oil fields and in the Suez Canal, the route to India, that may have been important. Certainly Lloyd George thought so. But Balfour had thought about the Jews long before that, even in the 1890s, 20 years before the war. He had felt that the Jews were badly treated in Eastern Europe and in Russia, and he thought that Dreyfus in France was innocent. He thought it was an anti-Semitic, French anti-Semitic plot. Uh, so he was well on side for the Jews and felt that it was important for them to have a homeland. I would like to quote something from, from the book of what he said in Parliament at one time. He said, here you have a small race, originally inhabiting a small country, I think about the size of Wales or Belgium, at no time in its history, wielding anything that can be described as material power, crushed between great oriental monarchies its inhabitants deported, then scattered, then, then driven out of the country to every part of the world, and yet maintaining continuity of religion and racial tradition of which we have no parallel elsewhere. We cannot forget 
how they have been treated during long centuries. Our whole religious organization of Europe has proved itself guilty of great crimes against this race. So there was this great man who had long thought that the Jews should have their own home in Palestine. 